Security is hard. Authentication is hard. User management, you guessed it, hard. So let's make our pertainer lives a little bit simpler by using an authentication method that we know and we trust. Today, we'll take a look at configuring a pertainer to use GitHub and Google. In just a few clicks, you can turn on single sign-on and never have to worry about manually provisioning users again. Let's take a look at our pertainer instance. So here we are on the pertainer homepage. You'll see here that I have added my local Docker instance, my Docker desktop on Mac OS, where we can click and see all the usual information that we expect. Stacks, images, networks, yada, yada, yada. However, for me to access this pertainer instance, I used local authentication. You can see here, I'm the admin user, and if I pop back here, I log in with my username and password. If we go to settings and click authentication, we have the ability here to select between internal authentication that we're using now, LDAP, Active Directory, and OAuth. We're gonna to focus today on OAuth because this is the authentication method that most people will find handy. We can click on OAuth here and we'll see that we have a couple of toggles that we can change. One, do we even want to use single sign-on? Spoiler alert, yeah, we do. Managing individual users sucks. You then have a decision to make. Do you want to enable automatic user provisioning? This just means that if you want anyone within your organization, anyone with an account on your external authentication provider, single sign-on provider, to access your pertainer, that can be configured. And to do so, you configure a default team. For today, we're not gonna use that. The other setting you can enable is automatic team membership. So giving people access to teams by default based on claims within the external authentication provider. And we will do a follow-up video where we take a look at automatic user provisioning and automatic team membership. But today, we're gonna to keep this short and sweet. We're gonna focus on setting up Google and GitHub authentication for your pertainer instance. So let's start with GitHub. Like most OAuth configurations, you need a client ID and a client secret. To get these, you can go to your GitHub organization where you can click settings, scroll all the way down to developer and select OAuth apps. Now you'll see I already have a few, but we're going to create a new one. I'm going to call this pertainer in production. And it doesn't matter what your homepage is set to. So I'm just going to say google.com. For the authorization callback, this will need to be a URL that resolves to your pertainer instance. Because I'm running this locally, I'm going to use localhost 9443. From here, we can click register. Oh, and make sure you get the protocol right. This gives us our client ID like so. so. Let's pop back over to Pertainer and drop it in. Next, we need a client secret. So we'll click Generate New Client Secret, where you'll have to provide some authentication to GitHub. This secret will never be shown to you again, so make sure you store it in a nice, safe place. We drop this in like so and hit Save. And that's it. You've now configured your pertainer instance to authenticate with a GitHub application. Now, before we log out and test our GitHub authentication, we need to do one more thing. Because automatic user provisioning is disabled and automatic team membership is disabled, we have to go to users and add raw code. This is my GitHub username. From here, I can say I am an administrator. Let's pop back in here to authentication, click save just to confirm that everything looks all right before finally logging out. Now you'll see right away that it logged me straight back in. And if you caught the little flickers, you would have seen the pertainer logo. It detected that I'm not unauthenticated. Now that we've logged out of pertainer, it's redirected us to the GitHub page. 
What's happened is we've browsed to localhost 9443. Our trainer has detected that we're no longer logged in. Redirected us to GitHub to see if it can get authentication details. Where I've logged out and authentication has failed. So we can say, hey, let's log in to GitHub. And you'll see that our continue with the pertainer in production application is here. We click sign in, verify our TOTP. And now we're being asked to authenticate the pertainer in production app against GitHub. We can click authorize. We'll be redirected and logged in to pertainer. And that is GitHub authentication. Now, word of warning, this is easy to mess up. And in fact, I've done it a few times. You can turn off the hide authentication, hide internal authentication prompt. This just means that if you do mess up any settings, you can come back here and log out. We'll sign out of GitHub, go back to Pertainer, and now we have an option, log in with GitHub or use internal authentication. So if you do mess it up, don't worry, just remember to check that box. And that is external authentication with GitHub. So next, let's take a look at Google. So we go back to the settings authentication screen where we can select Google. Now it's important to note that you can only have one of these enabled at any given time. When we select Google, we lose GitHub. We're going to delete the client ID. The client secret is already hidden and we're going to head over to Google Cloud. From Google Cloud, you're going to want to go to API and services and credentials. The easy way to get there is in the search bar to type OAuth and that's the second hit. From here, we say create credentials where we want to create an OAuth client ID. Now we can say that we are a web application and we'll call this pertainer in production. And I'm just going to add Google to that to avoid any confusion or ambiguity with the GitHub client. From here, we can add the authorized JavaScript origin. And we're going to use localhost 9443. And in fact, we're going to copy this for the authorized redirect URLs too. We click create, and much like the GitHub one, we get our client ID. We can hit copy, pop back, and paste. Next, we're going to copy the secret, where we head back to Pertainer, and paste. From here, we click save. Much like the GitHub, we have to pre-add our user. Go back to users. And now we're going to add David at rawcode.academy. Why? That is my Google username. And I'm going to make me an administrator. Now we can go and log out. So let's click log in with Google. We get presented with the account switcher and you can see that it's going to continue to the raw code academy because that's the google cloud project name that was used we select the user and we're logged in this is just a short video today showing you how to improve your security posture by removing some headaches for managing your pertainer instance nobody likes managing individual user accounts you're probably already using github google or some other authentication provider. So just let that do the heavy lifting and manage your pertainer users too. In the next video, we'll take a look at automatic team membership and automatic account creation using those two little chat boxes we avoided in the first video. So come back and see how to go a little deeper with pertainers external authentication. We'll see you in a couple of days. Until then, have a great day.